Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. My name is Ashish and today let's do the unboxing for the new MacBook Air with the M1 chip inside. This is the space gray color with the 512 GB hard drive and 8 GB of RAM. So it's one of the stock configurations available, but it's got the 8 core GPU instead of the 7 core GPU that comes with the base model and it's got double the storage amount. So without further ado, let's get into the unboxing. So as you can see, fairly standard box and we have a nice tab here that we can pull to open it up. And there we have it. And let's gently raise the box to reveal the MacBook Air for the first time. And here we are. So as you can see the MacBook Air in the space grey color is right here and you have this little tab here which you can use to lift it up. So there we have it. So just keeping it aside for a second. In the box you also get a USB-C cable and it looks like it's the 2 meter long version and besides that you have your usual documentation from Apple. It's a quick start guide to the MacBook Air. Some regulatory information and you get the Apple stickers in space gray. And with the MacBook Air you get a 30 watt charger. So this is a 30 watt charger. With the MacBook Pro models you get the 60 watt charger instead. Uh, but the charging times are only different by about 15 minutes so you do not lose out much by going for this MacBook Air because the battery is a bit smaller so from 0 to 100 this takes only about 15 minutes more to charge this MacBook uh, than it does from 0 to 100 for the new MacBook Pro. So that's all you have in the box. So you have the USB-C cable, the 30 watt charger, the MacBook itself, the regulatory information, quick start guide and stickers. Okay, so now let's take off, now let's peel off the covering from the MacBook Air. And there we have it for the first time, the MacBook Air in the space gray color. And are you ready for this? As we all know that it's instant on, so let's see what happens when I open this laptop. It will possibly turn on instantly. Take off that, and it does. Now in India, this particular variant costs 1,18,000, and you also have a scheme where you can get 6,000 rupees cash back. So essentially you can get it for 1,12,000 uh, with the HDFC cash back. And if you have a business, obviously you can get GST input back, but that's the price you pay for the 512 GB version. So we've all seen and heard about how great the M1 chip inside the new MacBooks, the Air and the Pro is. But it's really confusing in terms of configurations and choices available. There's tons of excellent videos doing comparative tests and analysis on this subject. But I wanted to add my two cents in terms of everyday usage that you may find useful. Starting with a choice between the Air and the Pro. Well, the consensus seems to be that there isn't any real difference between their performance unless you run extended loads, meaning you are doing processor intensive tasks for a long period of time. Now running synthetic benchmarks can give you a good basis of comparison between the machines, but what does that mean in terms of everyday usage? Well, from what I have learnt based on my research, you will be well served by spending as little as possible on these M1 machines. There are bigger, better, newer looking devices coming soon. So if you uh, look at these as bridge computers till you find one that delivers on all counts is a great idea. So the Air saves you a lot of money that you can use to bump up memory or storage in your device. It is also noticeably lighter and easier to pick up. 
In terms of the three colors available, certainly look for what you like best. But consider this, because of the lightweight and the excellent battery life and portability of the MacBook Air, you are more likely to move this computer around a lot and perhaps keep it on a variety of surfaces. Now these machines are not actively cooled by a fan, rather they use the aluminum chassis to dissipate the heat generated inside them. So that means it's probably not a good idea to cover them with anything like a skin or case. That means your laptop will come into contact directly with many surfaces. Because of this, if you choose the silver color, it will age a lot better than the other two colors since it's closer to the original color of the aluminum. For example, this is my Space Gray iPad Pro and despite having a dbrand skin, you can see the bottom part that comes in contact with the smart keyboard folio has seen some wear on the finish. The Space Gray color has worn off. This would have been almost undetectable on the silver version. Let me briefly address the choice of RAM available. I firmly believe that you can never have too much RAM, but if going for 16 GB is driving up the cost too much for you, or is taking too long to be delivered, then by all means go for the 8 GB variant. You will be well served by it in this new efficient M1 SoC. After all, everything here is tightly integrated with each other. For everyday usage combined with fast SSD access for swap files, you will not be able to tell the difference. Just like you never feel a lack of RAM on iPhones or iPads, you will be fine with the 8 GB Air as well. I will dwell further on this in a future video, so do watch out for that one. And lastly, storage. I would strongly suggest choosing the 512 GB variant off the air if you can afford it. I looked at the in-store display model to see the kind of storage it had available and it was only showing around 189 GB of storage free. Now if you do any kind of creative work, this will prove insufficient. Most people get around this by having an external SSD and there's nothing wrong with that. In fact, that's how I edit my videos on my MacBook Pro 15 inch from 2018 that also has a 512 GB SSD. The thing that scares me when I'm not editing on my desk is the vulnerability of the connection. It will take very little for this to bend and render the whole port and hence the logic port of the MacBook useless. I've been told of several instances of this happening at the Apple Service Center. So basically, I would rather have this nice lightweight laptop available with enough storage to edit at least small projects straight off the SSD. Also, sometimes when you may be traveling and have a ton of photos and videos on your camera or phone, the extra space will let you dump that footage and media onto the laptop and you can transfer it to a hard disk or to the cloud at a later stage. And finally, remember that applications such as Final Cut Pro need storage space to create optimized media and render files and having that extra storage will prove beneficial in the long run. Now I plan on testing this MacBook for my daily usage and I will report back on how it performs for the tasks I need it for. Not synthetic benchmarks and not even stress testing it because that's missing the point. Instead, I will test it with Final Cut Pro and Chrome running together and perhaps Adobe Lightroom Classic as well. If it can handle that and perform as well or better than the 15 inch MacBook Pro I have, then it's a winner in my books. Do subscribe and stay connected to watch that video. Thanks for sticking by till the end and I will see you in my next one.